Hey, welcome to Unlimited Health. What's up? What's up? Um, it's been a while. Like, um, yeah, it's, um, I wanted to come, but you know, yesterday was my birthday. Was my birthday. What can I do? Okay, it was my birthday, and I uh, had to, like, you know, do my thing. Do my thing. Cut, cut the cake. Go to some. Uh, to go to a temple pray to god and everything it was all cool i loved it spent time with my friends and whatnot you know but um you know this this mystery is super big and super creepy and weird and then we're gonna watch some uh, weird shit too so let's just go and um you know if you like this by the end of the stream please follow me on twitch okay please follow me on twitch and uh let's do it three two one let's go Hmm. <laughs> Today's Hi. video is sponsored by Audible. Audible uh, is the let's, leading provider let's of spoken go away word entertainment. From the uh, intro and into the fucking video. Alright, let, let me load up some. Okay, let's go. Okay, Chuck Morgan, huh? The case of Charles Morgan. It's perhaps one of the strangest I've ever come across. Hmm. Like something ripped straight from the pages of a David Lynch script. Oh. And let me tell you, it's absolutely Will. filled to the brim with a whole host of cryptic clues that'll leave you scratching your heads. Impossible situations, undercover agents, hitmen, and the mafia. Hmm. And this one's got it all. And you'll soon realize okay. why it's left investigators baffled for years. Hmm. So get your shovels ready, because we're about to dig into this bizarre rabbit hole and see if we can figure out what really happened to Charles Morgan. Hmm. Okay. Charles, or as he preferred to be called, Chuck Morgan, was a 39-year-old successful businessman, the head escrow agent at Statewide Escrow. Huh. Described by those who knew him as an unassuming workaholic, Chuck still managed to make time for his family and made hmm. a point of driving two of his four young daughters to school every morning. Huh. March 22nd, 1977, was no exception. Hmm. That morning, he and his daughters left their home in Tucson, Arizona. Huh. He dropped them off at the school gates and set off for work. Okay. The thing is, he never made it to the office that morning. Oh, shit! After dropping his girls off, Chuck vanished. That's crazy. When he didn't return home that evening, his family, of course, began worrying about his well-being and wondered what could have possibly happened to him. Whoa. For three long days, he was missing, and okay. his family prayed for his safe return. Oh, man! At 2 a.m. on March 25th, hmm. those prayers were half answered when Chuck came hobbling through the front door of his family home. What? Like an absolute mess. Oh, shit! According to his wife, Ruth, oh. Chuck was missing a shoe. This is her? Plastic handcuffs wrapped around one of his ankles, and what? his hands were bound together with a plastic zip tie. Oh he my clearly god! Just escaped from some terrible situation. Oh my god! He quickly realized that for whatever reason, Chuck was unable to speak, but the look on his huh. face alone made it clear that he was terrified. Huh? As Ruth frantically tried. Dude, to if you like escape from some some shady dudes kidnapping you and you know tying you up to a corner or something, if you escape from that situation, you pack your fucking bags and run. You run so far that you should not even be in the fucking country. You need to fucking change countries, bruh. That is fucking creepy. I don't know, find some kind of job, something. I don't know, um, do something, restart your whole life because holy shit, this is not good. What is, what the hell? Man. To ask him what had happened and where he had been for the past three days, hmm. Chuck rushed to grab a pen and paper and wrote down that he had been captured and tortured and that his captors had painted a hallucinogenic into the inside of his throat. Whoa! He wrote that if he ingested this substance, it would either drive him irreparably insane or oh. completely destroy his nervous system. Outright oh my him. god! He didn't name who had taken him. Inside his throat? I would never be able to like resist that shit. It's in the throat, man. What if you like, you know, what if you like, uh, you know, take some, like, I don't know, uh, swallow some spit or whatever, and it's gone. <laughs> It's inside your stomach now. You're gonna die. Like how? How is that even a thing? And how did he manage to, like, hold off from that? Like, how is he managing that? 
who had painted Jeez. this thing into his throat. But painted instead, his th simply wrote down for Ruth to move the car from outside. Hmm. He didn't want them to know he had come home. Okay. Ruth moved the car, then immediately went to go and call the police. Hmm. Chuck stopped her. Oh, if man. you call the cops, Chuck wrote down, they'll kill all of us, even the girls. I wanted to call a doctor and the police, Ruth later said. Hmm. But Chuck was adamant that that would be signing a death warrant for the entire family. Okay. Wow! For a whole week, Chuck laid low in the family home. So he can't do even the, the, the biggest, like the, uh, the fucking cops, the biggest thing that can protect your country, the cops, the government, all of these like leadership position people, they are looking for him. And oh my God, that's not gonna, man, I would like fucking run, change countries. I would go into a country, I would go from this country to some other country, and I would go to another country from that country. You know, I would just hitchhike as much, I, I would just change places as much as I can so that they can never even try to find me, you know? I, I would change everything, like holy shit. Ruth nursed her husband back to health by hmm. feeding him with an eyedropper. Huh. But although he physically recovered from his ordeal, Mentally, he was a wreck. Hmm. Okay. Before his voice returned, Chuck confessed to Ruth that for the past few years, he'd been working as an undercover agent for the federal government, specifically Why? the Treasury Department, covertly helping them fight organized crime and stopping the mob from defrauding the government. Oh, God. They took my Treasury ID, he wrote, still refusing to name names. Hmm. Chuck continued to keep his lips sealed for the sake of his family, huh. but even so, still feared for his own life. Oh man. He took to wearing a bulletproof vest wherever he went and made sure that his daughters never had to walk to or from school. Bro. He still refused to tell anyone who tormented him and why, but did tell his own father that if anything were to happen to him, he had hidden a letter somewhere in the house explaining the entire situation. Oh my God. Don't tell Ruth about that note though, he told his father, lest she go looking for it prematurely. It wasn't for her eyes, or for anyone else's. Not while he was still alive, at least. Oh, man. Dude, like, think, like, think, like, the whole fucking country is looking for you, pretty much. These people are fucking, it's not like some terrorist gang that is, you know, uh, tying you up and torturing you or anything. It's not like some Al-Qaeda shit. Or it's not like some, a bunch of drug addicts, like druggy, uh, you know, pedophile ring or anything. It's not like that. It's the fucking whole country that's chasing you. The, the, the cops, the fucking government, everybody. That, that's not good. That's fucked up. Okay, uh, let me take a look at the, uh, the stream right now. It's fucking creepy as hell. And I hope you enjoy this. And, and by the way, if we, you, you, the people that are watching this, yesterday I... I'm sorry, okay, yesterday was like uh, my birthday, so I couldn't do a stream, so I'm now here, okay, <laughs> just so you know, you know, <laughs> I wanted to title this video as like my birthday, you know, but then <laughs> my birthday is over, this is the next day, okay, I, I, for the, if it's 16th August for you, then it's my birthday, 16th August is my birthday, now for me it's 17th August, so it's, it's weird, okay, so let's watch. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. And also, like, I don't want to, like, say, it's my birthday, it's my birthday. It, I don't want it's to, it's, it sounds like I'm trying to gr get attention. It's not, it's not like that. I just wanted to say it, okay? Let's Two go. months with no further incidents, Ruth mm. began to believe that this confusing and scary chapter in the Morgan family life story was finally coming to an end. Okay. But those two months were just the calm before the real storm. Oh, shit, again? On June 7th. Chuck once again disappeared while on his way to work. Oh God. Nine days later, this an unidentified woman called the Morgan family household. Oh my God. Ruth answered the phone. Ruthie? Yes? Chuck is all right. Ecclesiastes 12, one through eight. Oh my God. After leaving that message, the unknown woman immediately hung up the phone. Oh God. Ruth got out her Bible. Dude, this location is creepy as fuck, and it feels like it's actually happening. What? The passage the woman had named, Ecclesiastes 12, 1 through 8. Huh. That passage reads as follows. 
Hmm. Men are afraid of a high place and of terrors on the road. Remember oh. him before the silver cord is broken and the golden bowl is crushed. Then the dust hmm. will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. What, what was that fuck? supposed to mean? Two more days after oh, receiving shit. that cryptic message, Chuck's lifeless body was found in the desert. Near oh, fuck! The, 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 the Bible verse, it's saying like, um, you know, something about a road and then the dust will return to the earth, meaning the desert. You know, I guess she should have seen this coming. But these are, no these are normal people, man. The normal people are not thinking about uh, Bible verses hardcore and trying to save someone. Come on, dude. What, what is it? Why can't you just tell her what needs to be said and quickly cut the, uh, you know, close the fucking phone and, and be done with it? Why do you why do you have to be cryptic? Thanks. Fuck. He'd been dead for approximately 12 hours. He was still wearing his Kevlar vest. Oh, shit. But had been shot through the back of the head. The shot had come from his own Magnum, which was lying in the dust beside him. Oh. Strangely. No fingerprints were found on it, or on anything else at the scene for that matter. Residue on Chuck's left hand indicated that he had fired a weapon though. Hmm. Chuck was also wearing a belt, the buckle of which concealed a sharp blade. Oh. Detectives also found Chuck's car nearby. Inside was a note with directions to Chuck's body, as well as a pair of sunglasses that definitely didn't belong to him. What the fuck? There was also a box full of ammo. In the back seats, they found one of Chuck's teeth wrapped up in a white handkerchief. Oh my god. The strangest clue of all, however, was found on Chuck's person. He had clipped a $2 bill to the inside of his underwear. Oh, On what? this bill, he had written seven Spanish surnames, beginning with the letters A through G. Above those names, he had written Ecclesiastes 12 and drawn arrows towards the note serial number indicating the verses 1 through 8, the same verse the mysterious woman on the phone had mentioned to Ruth. Oh, shit! A crudely drawn map on the back of the bill led detectives to the towns of Robles Junction and Salacity, both of them in wow. the area between Tucson and Mexico. Dude, this is so mysterious and creepy! And both of them infamous for smuggling. Hmm. What was Chuck alluding to with this mysterious clue? Had what was the bill he been planted to? on him, or had he left it there himself? A sort of secret message. What was the Bible passage meant to indicate? And more importantly, who was the woman who had called Ruth to mention it? In spite oh, of all man. these puzzling and suspicious... It's, it's almost like he gave the uh, enemies from other nations some information or something. Or maybe like he, 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 he uh, broke some rules and the people are now after him because, because of his breaking of rules that, that made things... 10 times worse for them and now they're after him and finally they got him you know it, it, oh my god why would you not run away why would you stay in the same house like what the fuck i would just grab your just just go grab your wife and leave the country this is obviously pathetic man everybody's chasing you man like seriously it's clues investigators were quick to rule that chuck had taken his own life which, in the eyes of many people, just doesn't add up. Huh. Obviously, his wife disagreed with that conclusion, saying that Chuck would have never left his girls. Hmm. Investigative journalist Don Devereaux also called Bull and stated, quote unquote, I've never seen, in all of my years as a journalist, a fellow take himself out in the desert wearing a bulletproof vest and shoot himself in the back of the head. Oh, shit! Two days after Chuck's body was discovered, Huh. A mysterious woman called up the Pima County Sheriff's Department. Huh. She called herself Green Eyes and said oh. that she was the same woman who had called Ruth. Mm. Green Eyes claimed that in the week leading up to Chuck's demise, he had oh. been hiding out in a motel. She oh. apparently had visited him at the motel and said that Chuck had a suitcase filled with thousands of dollars. Oh my god. Apparently, he told her that the money was to pay off an assassin that was after him. Oh shit! Had put out a $90,000 contract on his life, and it was increasing at a rate of $5,000 a day. Oh my he god! Said he was going to meet the hitman himself and buy back his life. Oh Whether my god! Whether that version of events is true or not remains to be seen. 
since to this day. It's like John Wick. What the fuck? <laughs> Except we don't have a fighter. We have a uh, a, a very you know it's a, a family man that shouldn't have been in a situation like this. If this was John Wick, he would fucking kill the whole team that is the assassin, all the motherfuckers in one day, like literally. Holy shit. Nobody knows who Green Eyes really was, or even what her connection was to Chuck. Hmm. But given that she called Ruth shortly before her husband's untimely fate, quoting the same passage as found on the $2 bill, and that later, CCTV footage came to light, showing an unknown woman with Chuck at a motel. Hmm. It's clear that she wasn't just some nobody, pretending to be involved in the case for attention. But wow. why was she continuing to involve herself in it? I'm telling you she's related to something. Go fucking, uh, I don't know, try to track her down. Try to maybe follow her, do some stalking in a CIA fashion or something. And uh, figure out who the fuck she's meeting, who she's working for. I'm telling you, man, you cannot just take some statements and conclude that she, she's not, uh, she doesn't know anything. Come on, man. Come on. And was she a friend of Chuck's? Hmm. Or a foe? Woo. Speaking of friend or foe, shortly after Chuck's demise, huh. two well-dressed men came to Ruth's home and knocked on the front door. Really? They claimed to be FBI agents and quickly flashed their badges, barely giving Ruth a chance to examine them. Oh, man. They opened and closed their identification very fast, said Ruth. Oh. They said they wanted to come in and look through the house. They never said what they were looking for. Oh. Ruth felt too intimidated to ask for the agents' names. But whoever they were, they turned her house upside down, searching for something. Oh, man. Now, you might be asking. You should have asked their fucking names, and or, or if they didn't tell you their names, then you should have told them to fuck off. But, but, come on, dude. Come on, and where, where are your rest of your family members? I would, like, leave that fucking house and go live with my aunt or, I don't know, somebody. If you were a woman, especially, you would, like, you, you should go live with your your relatives. Why were you still in that house? I That, that house is fucking gone, okay? The motherfuckers are there to fucking uh, kill anybody that comes in their way. You know, they might come in and break the fuck break into the house and start looking up shit you know i'm just saying lazy you know? what was written in that letter that chuck left behind the one he had hidden in the house explaining who was behind all this hmm. well here's the thing despite searching high and low for it that letter has never been found oh. as such we have no idea what information chuck left behind or if there ever was a letter at all dude but assuming chuck wasn't lying Assuming he really had left behind a note explaining everything, then why hasn't it been found after all these years? Well, oh, perhaps man. it was. Perhaps those men that paid Ruth a visit weren't really FBI agents after all. Perhaps that's oh. what they turned her house upside down searching for. Chuck's full confession. A piece of evidence that could have brought down some powerful people. Maybe they got their hands on Chuck's missing letter before anyone else could find it. Oh, man. The man who kept this whole mystery alive. The aforementioned Maybe they came for that fucking letter and they got the letter and they left. You know? Oh my god. The reporter, Don Devereaux, heard about how the FBI had torn Ruth's house apart looking for something. Hmm. Sure that Chuck hadn't taken his own life and determined to get to the bottom of this case, Devereaux called up the FBI himself and asked them what their search was all about. Hmm. To his surprise, they told him that they had never paid a visit to Ruth's house at all and that they didn't even know who Chuck was. What the fuck? When I made a Freedom of Information Act request to the FBI. They had never heard of Charles Morgan, despite Whoa. the fact that they obviously opened an investigation. Despite the fact the FBI interviewed Mr. Morgan's attorney. Oh shit! They were all over this thing like a blanket for a while, but now they've never heard of the guy. He never existed. No card, no file, no nothing. Yeah, he's like he's like a whistleblower or some shit that's coming out secretly and he fucking spoiled something, told the, told somebody things that he shouldn't have said and and now they fucking killed him, got rid of his files, everything, uh, searched up his house and totally cleaned his existence completely. So, oh my god. And the fact that his wife didn't even know that he was actually working undercover with some agents she didn't even know that so 
I would say that it's all his fault. He fucked up the whole thing. Uh, he shouldn't have joined a bunch of agents first to begin. Why would you be joining agents unless you're some military guy um, that are, that is into that and you have you have always worked with the uh, you know the uh, the militaries and FBI and shit like that? Then then you can do that. But a normal guy working for the agents with a normal life with a wife and everything, no. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna, especially when I think he even has like kids, which is just ridiculous. And he would do it something like be an agent and shit. Why would he be? Why would he decide to become an agent? I, stupid, you know. It should also. He brought this shit onto himself. End of story. And this is the actual photo of him, uh, and and his body. Be mentioned here that someone, or someone's, broke into Chuck's impounded car and his office at around the same time these men searched Ruth's home. Wow. Both the car and office had been trashed, as if the intruders had desperately been searching for something in particular. Huh. Okay. Examining the theories. So oh, look, this, lo this location looks really good, man. I like this location. So, the way I see it, there are three main theories as to how Chuck ended up in the desert, dead. Hmm. Theory one. Chuck really had decided to end his own life, and left behind a trail of breadcrumbs and mysterious clues to lead everyone on a wild goose chase. Fuck. <laughs> this theory is supported by the fact that mm. Chuck's own magnum was used to end his life, and there was gunpowder residue on his hand. Huh. But honestly, I'm not buying this one. And nor are most other people, including his family, Don Devereaux, and a slew of other investigators. Hmm. Sure, the fatal shot came from his own magnum, but that doesn't mean that- Like, I, I keep uh, watching these mysterious disappearances, mysterious killings, all of these videos, and there's some, like, in my mind, I want there to be a gadget. I, I want someone to make a gadget that can track everybody in this world. Now, I know that privacy and freedom is important, but in the case of murder and disappearance, only then you can use this specific gadget and you can track everybody in the world and you can see who killed who. That would be so insane. That would be a revolutionary tech and should only be, only be available for the family members um, whose people are missing or, or killed, you know, and, and should only be uh, available for uh, either family members or the police, you know. That would be the best way to save this this world from all these fucking weird disappearances and murders you know that like so many people get disappeared even like kids you know isn't that crazy especially women in the sex tra sex trafficking world it's like so ridiculous we need this gadget to be fucking super popular and mainstream and everybody should be able to track anybody um not like randomly anybody, but more like people that that are having problems, you know, they should have that and, you know, and, and, you know, the police should have that. That would be much better. Like, honestly, this is ridiculous. That's the only way to solve these unexplained cases. Honestly. He was the one who fired it, especially considering the shot came through the back of his head. Whoa. Furthermore, the residue was found on his left hand. Huh. Chuck was a right-handed. Why would he use his wrong hand to fire into the back of his head? It also mm. doesn't make sense that a man intent on ending his own existence was walking around wearing a Kevlar vest. Huh. Not to mention, some of the evidence found at the scene points towards someone else being present when Chuck died. Specifically, the sunglasses and Chuck's missing tooth, which were found in the car. Hmm. Now, I'm willing to accept I could be wrong about all that. It is possible that Chuck just left behind some elaborate clues to make his demise seem more mysterious. Huh. But what really rules this theory out for me is Green Eyes. For her to have called Ruth before his death, huh. to have mentioned the same passages found written on the $2 bill, and to have known about Chuck's alleged ties to the mob. Hmm. Either she was someone who helped Chuck fake this whole mystery before he ended himself, hmm. or, more believably, she knew that Chuck was in some hot water. I'm telling you, she knows everything. You gotta fucking track her where the fuck she's going. I know people will say that's stalking, but if you really care about your husband, I would fucking do anything. Like, if I, if I, if my wife was somewhere and, and not missing, I would be fucking doing all kinds of weird shit. I'm sorry, but I would, like, I would not give up like that. That's crazy, bro. What the fuck? Theory two. 
Chuck really was an undercover federal agent, and was taken out during one of his missions after his cover had been blown. Huh. Chuck had told his wife that he had secretly been working to bring down the mob, and the fact the FBI acted as if he had never existed could have been them covering their tracks. Hmm. Chuck clearly knew he was in mortal peril, and that secret $2 bill under his clothes could have been his way to communicate a message, to pass on some coded information to another agent. Hmm. Others have speculated that Chuck had some... Like, honestly, dude, I'm not a Western guy. I'm not a Western person. I'm, I'm an Indian guy, right? So I see this FBI shit, all these government shit in the Western society, and they're like, they, they turn on their own people in an instant. In an instant, they turn on their own people. They kill their own people, uh, and they have their own agendas. It's like, it's so bad. No, I've not seen any nation that does that. Any nation which has its own government doesn't turn on their own people. It does, does shit like that never happens. But in this Western society, the FBI killing, uh, you know, people of their own nation in a secret way. It, it's just so, and tracking them down, stalking them, uh, turning their house upside down to check for some shit. It's like, what the fuck? There, nobody does that. If, if you're like, if you're from somewhere else other than the Western society and you got some, you know, shady looking individuals, government individuals that are like turning on you, trying to frame you and shit. That's a fucked up country. Leave that country. What the fuck? Information about some high level politicians and their dodgy connections with the criminal underworld. Hmm. Maybe they wanted him to disappear before he could make that information public. Stupid fucking bullshit. The main hole in this theory, though, is that we don't know whether Chuck really was an agent. Maybe he just lied to his wife to cover up the real truth. That truth being... Theory 3. Huh. Chuck was working with the mob. Hmm. He helped them embezzle funds and was taken out because he knew too much. Yeah, it's some, one of those things. For this theory than you one might. of those things where he uh, broke the rules or knew too much or some shit, you know. Might expect. After Chuck's story aired on the show Unsolved Mysteries, hmm. Don Devereaux, who worked on assignments for the show, received an influx of tips. Oh. It turned out that in the four years leading up to his demise, oh. Chuck had been involved in money laundering and illegal transactions in gold and platinum. Whoa. Making billions of dollars. Oh, shit. Allegedly, he had been using his position in the escrow company to help organize crime syndicates and international government officials make a fortune. Oh, my Chuck lived God. And worked in Arizona, the only state at the time that had certain blind trust laws, meaning oh. that an escrow agent like him would have been the only one who knew about his client's dodgy transactions, making the state a haven for mob groups like the Ned Warren family and the Joe Bonanno family. Oh no. Chuck was allegedly helping both of those families. Lord he became the center figure for fucking corruption. And he, he, he loved doing it. And now look, he got killed, man. The money. Apparently, there were even undercover CIA agents helping Chuck to do this. Oh in man. For a slice of the pie, of course. This is fucking bad. But here's the most important piece of information in my eyes. Devil. And this was in Unsolved Mysteries? Definitely not the new one where they don't even upload more than three or nine episodes. Fucking dumbasses. Uh, probably the old Unsolved Mysteries sh show, you know? Dang! I found out that Chuck kept duplicate records of all of these transactions. Hmm. He likely kept these to use as a bargaining chip, just in case his nefarious business partners turned against him. Wow. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that Chuck wasn't an undercover operative. After all, he may have been authorized to carry out illegal transactions as part of his mission and kept the records as evidence to use against his clients. Huh. But if this theory is correct, then in all likelihood, Chuck was dealing with some super shady individuals for his own personal gain, but bit off much more than he could chew. Either way, I personally think it's likely that those records were the reason. What a dumbass. I blame Chuck for every uh, every single thing that happened to him, man. He fucked up the whole thing. Why would you like... What the fuck? Chuck was no. killed. Especially believe, especially when, when, you, when you got kids and a wife. Why would you do all this shit? Existence of a paper trail came to light. His partners knew he couldn't be trusted anymore. Hmm. He may have been a rat. He may just have been protecting himself. 
But either way, he had to be taken care of. God damn it! After he was dead, they then sent men to his home and his office to search for those records. Oh god. Maybe Green Eyes was telling the truth. Maybe the hitman hired to take Chuck out had contacted him, told him to bring some cash out to the desert to buy his way out of the hit, huh. then killed him anyway, took the money and ran. Double payday. Fuck. Okay, uh, let me see the stream. Is the stream going? This is a very long video. I'm sorry. But, yeah, if you like it, please uh, follow me on Twitch, okay? Let me see the editing. It's going on. Okay, cool. Let's go. And then we're gonna switch to something, uh, other creepy stuff. And we gotta start playing some games as well. Because I'm getting tired of watching all, all the time. It's either creepy shit or something weird. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just ridiculous. Related instance. On May 14th, 1990, just after Chuck's episode of Unsolved Mysteries aired, hmm. the body of Doug Johnston, a 35-year-old who worked at a computer graphics company, was huh. found in his car in his company's parking lot. Whoa. He'd been shot through the back of the head. Oh my god. Why do I bring this up? Doug Johnston worked just across the street from reporter Don Devereaux. Oh the man. man. Who kept bringing attention to the Chuck Morgan case. Whoa. Doug Johnston and Don Devereaux drove almost identical cars. Oh Many my people, god. Including Devereaux himself, believed that he was the intended target. And that, for the unfortunate Mr. Johnston, this was a case of wrong place, wrong oh car, my god. wrong time. They're not leaving it him. It seems likely that someone wanted to take Devereaux out for his work on the episode and for continuing to bring attention to Chuck's case all these years later. Huh. One year after that, Devereaux was contacted by a writer from DC, a guy named Danny Casalaro. Huh. Casalaro asked Devereaux to give him any information he had about Chuck Morgan and his gold transactions. Huh. Devereaux agreed. However, he never got the chance to share that information. Oh. Casalero was found dead in his hotel bathroom in West Virginia before Devereaux could ever meet him. Oh my god! Four deep slashes covered his forearms and wrists. Oh my god! It appeared as if Casalero had taken his own life, but that just didn't make any sense at all. What the fuck? Casalero was extremely squeamish when it came to the sight of blood and put up a fuss whenever his doctor brother tried to prick his finger for blood work. The what coroner the fuck, also man? determined that he hadn't been alone at the time of his death. There was bruising on his arm and head, and the tops of three of his fingernails were missing, as if he had put up a fight. A professional cleaning crew just so happened to come into his hotel room the next day and erase all of the evidence. Wow. Now, either those two additional deaths were a massive coincidence, or someone was... If I was in such a fucked up place, in, in such a fucking crazy position situation i would be like you know i would go into the busiest street in the main road and uh, grab a chair and sit in the middle of the road and do my thing okay <laughs> whatever i'm doing i that would be my my home i would be in the middle of that road because nobody would be able to like kill me or do anything in front of the public i would sit down in the middle of the road and uh, whatever it is my job i would do that okay because holy shit <laughs> i would not be alone anywhere uh, in a house or in a car in the fucking parking lot no I would never be there. I would never be any of these uh, isolated places. I would only be in the middle of the fucking main road where, you know, there's cars, people walk in like 24-7. You know, even during the midnight, I would be in there, you know. That's the best place to be in. I was trying to silence Devereaux to hmm. stop him from reporting on the case. And I would carry a gun and I would be ready if some piece of shit decided to start shooting me. And I would wear all the fucking armor in the world. And I would start looking like a fucking uh, gladiator. <laughs> I would start looking like some character from Dark Souls. The, the main character, you know. And from helping others to do so. Devereaux himself certainly believes that the bullet used to kill Doug Johnston was meant for him. And that Casalero was whacked by a hired hit squad. Huh. But whether they were hired by the mob or some government official remains to be seen. Creepy. So, and that's the story of Chuck Morgan, the man who knew too much. Dude. Probably. There are still too many unanswered questions to come to any definitive conclusion. But in my estimation, Chuck was a smart guy who just got in over his head with the wrong people. But wow. even if I'm right, 
I'm still stumped when it comes to things like the $2 bill. Hmm. But what do you think? I would be fucking going John Wick on those motherfuckers. I would actually lure them into my house and start having a shootout and win the motherfucking shootout. I would not be like, fuck you. I would not be like, you know, running away and trying to like hide and shit. No, I would fight them back. I would take out their whole organization if it means fucking, you know, survive it. Like seriously. Who killed Chuck Morgan? <laughs> Was he really an undercover agent working against the mob? Or was he secretly working with them all along? Hmm. Did the authorities help to cover all of this up? Who was the mysterious witness, Green Eyes? A fellow agent? A secret woman in his life? Or someone with ties to organized crime? What was Ecclesiastes 12 meant to signify? Hmm. One unsolved mystery. A thousand unanswered questions. Okay. It's crazy to think a case as surreal as this one actually happened. And that someone, somewhere, wow. knows why. You know what, if I was a crazy ass motherfucker like that Chuck guy, I would be taking my wife away from my house and I would pretend to be in my house, but not really. And then I would, uh, you know, when they come in, when they try to break in and try to look for something in my house, I would plant a bomb in there and blow that shit up. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know, I would do some crazy action movie scene out there. Like seriously, I would do that. Unfortunately. Even if we do get a conclusive answer as to who that person or group is, Ruth Morgan will never get the closure she so desperately sought. Huh. She passed away in 2006, never knowing what her husband was truly involved in, or the identity of the people who took his life. But until her dying day, she was certain of one thing. That Chuck didn't take his own life. Dang, that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> that was creepy as fuck alright so next we're gonna watch something fucking weird we're gonna watch something weird okay what, what, we're gonna watch disturbing things caught on trucker dash cam footage this is gonna be creepy not creepy but more like what is what is this you know it's gonna make you curious it's gonna make you Weird, okay? Let's watch it, okay? Six most disturbing things caught on trucker dash cam footage. And we're gonna, if you like this, I think we're gonna watch another one if, if we can. These dash cam footages are fucking cool. I love them so much, you know? Let's just watch it. Three, two, one, let's go! Rare. <laughs> This, this channel, Chilling Scares, YouTube channel, this channel has shitload of dash cam footages that are weird and fucking fishy and, oh man, let's go. <laughs> On June 19th, 2022, a trucker was driving down the PJ Patterson Highway in Jamaica at about 4.30 a.m. Hmm. Everything seems normal until a few seconds later, a bike is suddenly pushed a few feet in front of the truck. A sort of dark figure can be seen on top of the bike, but it's hard to tell whether it's an actual person or not. What? Where? Uh, the, something that can Okay, wait. Oh, it's approaching. What is that? Holy shit! What the fuck? The driver seems to tense up as he leans forward, but concerningly, he doesn't slow down. He doesn't okay, look it was just a fucking cycle. I guess this piece of shit was trying to rob the fucking truck or something. Nah, fucking run over him. Fuck him. Kill him. I don't give a fuck. Kill the bitch. I don't care. Why would you? He was like literally stopping the truck by throwing the cycle. Fuck him. Too disturbed, simply checking his side view mirrors after running the bike over. Shortly after, the camera showing the trucker even shows him shaking his head and chuckling as he continues driving down the highway. <laughs> Yeah, why would the driver stop anyway? It's not like the cycle stopped the truck or anything. It would be like, fuck you. It would be going. Why would he stop and like, you know, investigate? That motherfucker was fishy, okay? I would, I would be like running over him if I got the chance, you know? <laughs> fuck this. I mean, like seriously, I wouldn't run over him, but it's like, nah, man, nah. <laughs> The unsettling footage raises a lot of questions, but the trucker might have actually escaped a potentially life-threatening situation by not stopping. 
Huh. Many people have commented that this is a very common robbery method in Jamaica. Exactly. Jamaica. I knew that that was some kind of a robbery. Probably has a fucking gun, that piece of shit that would point the gun at you and whatever robbery he could he would have done it or probably and and wouldn't have like let you go because then if he shows his face that means you're dead because he doesn't want you to fucking talk to anybody about his face and he would kill you like seriously dummy or even a bundle of blankets are placed on top of a bike to make it look like there's a person riding it the bike is then pushed in front of a vehicle to shock and guilt trip the driver into getting out and- I'm so glad that the truck never like tumbled upon or fall down or you know stopped or anything like skidding on the road with uh, you know fucking uh, sparks everywhere. No, it's going smooth and sl uh, you know normally. The cycle was crushed and it's going. End of story. Good job. Because if it was any way other, it would have been like, holy shit. And checking on the person. This poor fella could have died. He's working hard, working during the midnight. You know how much people like have to work? How dangerous it is to drive during the midnight on a big highway like this? That's terrible, man. And you can probably God. imagine what happens next. You can't see anything. Even if you have like headlights, you can't see anything above. And it... During the midnight, the driving is insane, man. In these type of robberies, the person who pushes the bike rarely operates alone and is usually accompanied yeah. by other bandits hiding in the shadows. Yeah. I was about to say that one dude don't make any sense. I would say there's a bunch of dudes hiding right there somewhere. Waiting for the driver to get out of the vehicle. Hmm. If the trucker would have stopped, he probably would have been the victim of a robbery attempt, or worse. Fuck. Although a failed robbery attempt is the most likely explanation for this footage, it can't be 100% confirmed whether or not that's what actually happened. Hmm. The driver is fucking smart. Good job. Hire him. Give him promotion. He knows what to do. This okay. dash cam footage was taken in 2019 in Queensland, Australia. Hmm. A silver Ford Falcon with no license plate suddenly stops in the middle of the median strip on Queensland Pacific Motorway, blocking the path of a BMW right behind it. The oh. driver of the BMW stops, and that's when a man and a woman step out of the Ford and walk towards the BMW. What the fuck? And it's already open, the door. Look at that shit. What the fuck, man? Dude, people with no driver's license, you know, the fucking uh, plate in the back with the number, people with none, people without that, they are fucked up people, bro fucking run if you see a car with no uh you know plate number in the back you fucking run they are dangerous oh my god why grab a gun in the car if you're in the car right now grab the gun and get ready these pieces of shit they're stopping the whole traffic what the fuck are they they must be high or drunk that's the only explanation. What the fuck? Looks like a bunch of angry teenagers. You know, some of these fucking morons that like frat house parties, frat losers, people that are like uh, bachelors and shit that live uh, alone, fucking a bunch of bitches, and, but never marrying anyone, ha no, having no kids and shit, you know? Some of these lonely idiots are, they get easily angry. They, 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 they plot revenge, they fucking hold grudges. These people are fucked up. So uh, remember, always be nice to everybody. That's the only way to survive in this world, man. Holy shit, you cannot be like, please stop, you cannot be angry at anyone because idiots like this fuck the footage shows the man threatening the driver with a sharp object while the woman tries to force open one of the doors but eventually the bmw manages to pull away and escape the rest of the incident wasn't captured by the trucker's dash cam but several witnesses later claimed that the couple threatened another driver in the next lane and attempted to steal their car but they were again unsuccessful oh and eventually my drove god away. but the violent carjacking attempts didn't end there Queensland police later revealed that the couple continued driving south on the highway until they reached the next exit where they confronted another driver. Oh my god. Unfortunately, this last attempt was successful. Oh god. After they god. forced a 67-year-old woman out of her Mazda CX-3 hatchback, they drove away with the stolen vehicle, leaving the woman stranded in the middle of the road. Police oh. searched for the couple, but it was never confirmed whether or not they managed to find the carjackers. 
and some of these fucking bitches like why do you have a boyfriend that does this kind of shit and you still support him and engage in his fucking bullshit why would you do that some of these bitches like they all they want is dick and they don't want to get married don't want to have kids and and they're lazy and and fucking retards and they never you know they they always do stupid shit they always smoke weed and go out there and fucking do retarded shit that's what these bitches do i hate these some of these women bro especially western women they're all whores like recently i found out like 13% of women are virgins and and 14 20% of men are virgins the, all of the the other whole population is a bunch of fucking you know sex addicts whores dr- druggies junkies and pieces of shit it just that makes no sense you know it's a falling society that is a proof right there western society is going to fall in in a span of 50 years somewhere in the future it's going to die with with idiots like this it's going to die who, who does this who does this you stop the car in the middle of the road and start walking around and stealing other cars that makes no fucking sense nobody does that in any other nation only here <laughs> they do it oh my god in the western society it's fucked up dang Look at that shit. That makes on no September sense. On September 6, 2018, a tractor trailer was stalled on the train tracks near a small neighborhood in Chester, Virginia. This footage was captured by the dash cam on a truck belonging to a man named Mike Eugene, a mm. nearby resident who stopped in front of the tracks to get a closer look. Alarmingly, the crossing guard is down and the lights are flashing on the tracks, which of course means that a nearby train is on its way. Oh. The song Ghost Riders in the Sky can be heard playing on the truck's radio as a man rushes down the passenger side of the trailer and makes a run for it. The driver and another passenger also jump out of the trailer cab just a few seconds before a train smashes into the trailer, slicing it in half and sending sheet metal flying in every direction. Oh shit! You fucking dumbass idiots! Oh! <laughs> It's like a subway sandwich being cut by a fucking um, you know, rolling pin or whatever. <laughs> What? fucking stupid what are you doing man and it's a tropicana fucking train i guess a bunch of uh, you know tropicana juices inside i guess <laughs> juice bottles what the fuck <laughs> and this dude is like huh another day you see that spiderman meme where he's like shit is happening but he's eating sandwich and turning around you know this d- <laughs> good job you fucking dumb asses This is not even What the Since fuck? the trailer's parking brake wasn't engaged, the semi-tractor rolled off the road after the collision. A few huh. seconds after the crash, the man who recorded the incident pulls up closer to the truck driver and asks if anyone was still in the truck when the train was hit. Huh. Hey, everybody was in that truck, were they? You're all out, okay. Okay. <laughs> Fucking stupid. Fortunately, the truck driver responds that they had all gotten out on time. No one was hurt during the incident, but apparently this wasn't the first time a train And the train actually fucking stopped. You people are just ruining everybody's work timings and everything with this bullshit. It, they they have to drop some kind of they have to do some kind of delivery with the Tropicana whatever and it, it just makes it's so stupid. Smashed into a truck that was stalled on those same tracks. In 2014, <laughs> a similar situation resulted in a deadly collision at the crossing. Two huh. months later, another large truck got stuck on the tracks and hit by a train. Oh, the same shit. thing happened again in 2016. This railroad crossing on Curtis Street in Chester has a very steep grade, and there are signs on the road leading to the crossing warning that flat-bottom trailers can get stuck on the tracks. Oh the shit! Clear- It was stuck on the tracks. I didn't listen to that part. Dang. Really haven't been enough to stop trailers from getting stuck, making this an incredibly dangerous crossing. Oh man. Yeah. This dash cam up. footage from 2020 shows two cars blocking a truck's path on an unidentified highway. Two men What get the out of their fuck? cars and approach the truck, aggressively motioning to the driver to get out of the vehicle. In Spanish, the driver can be heard repeatedly asking the men to at least let him pull over to the side of the road. As the third man gets out of one of the vehicles in the blockade, the truck driver communicates with a colleague by radio, telling him that he got cut off and is being asked to get out of his vehicle. This is insane. What is he doing? 
What the fuck is wrong with these pieces of shit? Trying to stop and steal? What the hell? A bunch of dumb... <laughs> I would fucking run them over! But, you know, I... God damn it! If you're like a delivery driver trying to deliver, like, in, in streets like this where nobody's there, you know, you fucking better, like, find, like, a big-ass car or some... like, a fast car or some shit, or, or go through, like, a train, like, a subway or some shit, because, oh my god, you cannot go on these streets you know, because anybody can stop you and kill you and take your shit and run away, you know? So, I don't know. Because, and nobody would know. They could do that shit in, in the fucking daylight. In front of, like, nobody's there too. Like, holy shit. Who the fuck are these assholes, man? And they, the have, puts the they have no problem conversating with this truck driver out of nowhere. Like, what? What the hell? People would be, like, awkward and shy talking to some random truck driver in the middle of the street. But these motherfuckers are, like, coming out and as if, like, they're used to doing this. And talking to this guy. What the fuck? The truck in reverse as one of the men approaches his vehicle while talking on the phone. And this is when the trucker seizes the opportunity to escape. Just before the man in the black t-shirt reaches the driver's door, the trucker pulls away and swerves around the two cars. Okay, come on, let's go, man, let's go! Let's fucking go! Fucking pieces of shit! Run, run over that bitch! Run over that bitch! And, and keep moving! Fuck them! Fucking morons! What the fuck? Fucking, fucking thieves! Pieces of shit! I would carry a gun. The two men that were blocking his path quickly get out of the way to avoid getting run over, but one of them manages to throw what we can only assume to be a rock at the truck, oh breaking the driver's God. window. Fortunately, this doesn't stop the trucker and he's able to drive away safely. It was later revealed that the three men were actually cartel members. Oh. The reasons for stopping the trucker are unknown, but oh judging my from the God. video, it couldn't have been anything good. I guess they got like some drugs that they want to store and they're overflown with drugs or some shit and they want to hide it in the truck or some shit. Grab a fucking machine gun and start shooting them. This is not good. Fucking cartel bitches. Fucking retards. No. I hate them. I hate this. This dash cam shit. and driver cam footage show a man falling asleep at the wheel of a large trailer truck. Oh shit, this is... <laughs> is he like a sick guy? Sick? Uh, Punjabi guy, because <laughs> I know them, they're Indians. What the fuck? He looks out the window a couple of times <laughs> before closing his eyes and apparently falling asleep as his truck races down the highway. Bro, By how the can time you... he opens his eyes again and realizes... Did you not sleep last night? What the What's fuck? happening? It's too late. Stupid motherfucker. How can you be like semi-closing your eye either? Like, you, I would be shocked to do that. I would be like stopping the, uh, the truck... And I would be like uh, trying to sleep a little bit and then go. Oh my god, this is wrong. This is fucking terrible. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god, dude! <laughs> fucking bitch! Oh, his uh, sick health, that thing fell off. <laughs> You fucking dumbass. The truck goes off the road <laughs> and speeds on. It reminded me of Dark Knight Rises. You remember that? Like the Bane, like not Bane, but uh, you know, Bane's uh, mom or, or, or I don't know, somebody like she is the one that tries to drive off the fucking. <laughs> control yeah. toward the overpass. And at this point, there doesn't seem to be anything the driver can do to stop it. The truck flies off the overpass and slams down on the ground below, severely so <laughs> blasting the driver. Luckily, there were no cars below the overpass at the time, but the impact was enough to send everything no, flying inside the truck, even knocking the turban off the driver's head. Yeah, the turban is His gone! The driver was resting in the back of the truck during the incident. And oh, although he could God. be heard moaning in pain after the crash, neither of the two men were badly injured and were able to walk out of the truck unharmed. <laughs> You know what? People that wear turban are not this fucking stupid, okay? This motherfucker is <laughs> just ridiculous.
Honestly. He's just one of the few idiots, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> what did you do, man? What the fuck? <laughs> this is insane. After watching this footage, many people have commented that if it So there's another guy in the back and you put his life in danger. Fuck you. More for the what driver's the seatbelt. This incident would have ended much differently. It's unknown where this footage was captured and police didn't release any more information to the public about this case. But it's very likely that the That's definitely not India. I think that's um, western society somewhere like maybe like Chicago or some I don't know, maybe, maybe like some kind of Texas border or some shit, I don't know. Truck driver lost his job and was charged with reckless driving. Hmm. Reckless this driving, footage good! footage was captured in Jay, Maine. On April 15th, 2020, there was an explosion at one of the largest paper mills in the state, which was caught oh. by a nearby trucker's dash cam. Whoa! As the smoke and debris from the explosion quickly advanced toward the vehicle stopped on the road, the trucker can be heard communicating with his colleagues by radio, and they all sound understandably shocked at the sound of the explosion. Oh shit! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's flowing right towards the truck. Oh my god. It's flow. It's like the debris is like falling towards us. Holy shit. <laughs> Dude. That's a paper mill. The fuck? What what is in the paper mill that blows up like that other than probably ink and papers? I don't know. Is that a paper mill though? Is it really? I don't know what that is, but oh my god. Just before the incident, the truckers were Whoa. on their way to make a delivery of wood to the paper mill. But luckily oh. they were still on the road when the explosion happened. As the dark cloud oh. of smoke reaches the vehicles, debris starts falling on the truck, completely covering the windshield as the smoke continues to expand. Oh shit, it's still falling! <laughs> oh fuck it, it's becoming mad max out this like it's covering everything in mud what is this thing that's on the screen is that uh, wooden like pieces of wood what's good like what is this it's like when you saw a, a tree like a wood piece and and it's like pieces of wood just fly off it's like that what? <laughs> wow. Before the explosion, the Androscoggin paper mill employed over 500 people. And huh. at the time of the incident, there were about 175 employees working close to the site of the explosion. Somehow, nobody got hurt. According to the sheriff's department, the cause of the explosion was a rupture in a pressure vessel in the digester part of the mill. Huh. The digester is where wood chips are cooked to reduce them into fiber for the paper making process. Oh! One year after this footage was taken, the paper mill owners filed a lawsuit against the mechanical contracting company in Florida that assembled some of the machines in the mill, as it was found that the explosion was caused by a bad welding job. Oh man! Do everything perfectly. Don't, uh, you know, takes like fucking, don't, don't be lazy. Don't do it, like don't take shortcuts and fuck things up. That's what's gonna happen if you do it. <laughs> Wow, crazy man, crazy shit. <laughs> we're gonna watch, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, we're gonna watch uh, another uh, dash cam footage video. If, do you like that? Do you wanna see that? Or do we wanna change it? I don't know. But um, I don't know what to do. Like, should I watch another one? Let's watch another one. Six most disturbing Things caught on police dash cam footage. Um, is there anything else? Let's watch the most popular shit. That would be fucking scary. <laughs> Eight most disturbing things caught on dash cam footage. Let's watch this. This thing has 19 million views. Oh my god. Let's go. Let's watch this. Alright, let's go. And then we're gonna watch something else. <clears throat> we're gonna watch a... Uh, a mystery that I already reacted to, like already saw it on a, in another live stream, but this time there's a video saying that was debunked. So we're gonna watch that after this, okay? 
So let's go. Let's increase the volume. Let's do it. <laughs> and I know it's gonna be. This first dash cam video was captured in Australia. Okay. Two men in a Mercedes are driving down the highway when, through their rear dash cam, a car is seen quickly approaching. Whoa! Then swerves around the two guys before getting in front of them and slamming on the brakes. What the trying fuck? To run them off the road. By what first could be written Whoa! Rage, soon takes a more serious and disturbing turn. Holy two shit! Men notice the driver has an axe and is now waving it out his window. What the fuck? Them. What? Oh, axe, like, what? What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> Dude, he's like, hey, I wanna kill you. Stop! <laughs> what is he doing? Some dumbass with a fucking. He's he's angry about some shit, and he's like ruining other people's lives with this bullshit, like trying to stop people in the middle of the fucking uh, road and trying to like swinging an axe. What is wrong with you, man? Is something wrong? Calm down, why are you so angry? What the fuck? This is so fu- Oh my god! Oh shit, he's trying to- Oh what the fu- Is this a movie? He's trying to hit the fucking car! <laughs> what? Call them now! The sudden and unexpected encounter forced- Don't leave him on the road! Call them now, wait till the fucking police comes and fucking- Fucking ride him into the fucking trap so that the the police will catch him. You know? the two men to take a quick U-turn to lose the guy, but he continues to follow them. The situation is then taken even further when the two use the next exit and approach a roundabout. Wow, <clears throat> that motherfucker still following. What is this? <laughs> oh shit! What the fuck? Dude, this is fu this is like a movie. <laughs> no, no, no. Dude, some crazy dude in the middle of the street to start to fucking beat the shit out of you with this car. Oh my, oh my god. god. Oh my god, Two man. Two times the Mercedes is rear-ended, the second of which causes the attacker to spin out, sending him off the road. This D This is why you should carry a gun, you know? It Honestly, as an outsider, I'm not Indian. I'm not. I'm not Western man. I'm an Indian. Okay, so in India, this kind of shit doesn't happen that much because people recognize each other. People don't like, you know, in the name of independence, um, isolate each other and uh, you know treat everybody like they're strangers. You know, it doesn't happen. People talk to each other. People like you know understand. They don't annoy others. You know, but in Western society, there's independence is so much. The the idea of freedom is way too much. It's obsessed with freedom so much that everybody is a stranger to you. Uh, and and uh, if you treat everybody like a stranger, there's eventually going to be one guy that is pissed off at, at something in his mind. And he starts, you know, doing this on the street with a bunch of people. This is not good. You, the society itself is fucked up like this you know I guess you and now you gotta carry a gun because you cannot trust anybody you see what I'm saying that's why you cannot have this over obsession with freedom over obsession with independence this is what's gonna happen you know people are gonna try to fucking chase you just because they, they don't give a fuck about you you know it's because all because of freedom you know so the two guys to get away they would then drive to the nearest police station where they would report what had just happened. Insane. When police arrived to the scene of the crash, the car was gone. However, a few hours later, they would find the vehicle on the road, and from there, the driver was arrested. Good! Later, the owner of the dash cam footage would give the video more context. Huh. Apparently, the driver chasing them, for whatever reason, was 100% convinced they had robbed his house the night before. What the and fuck? Obviously, this wasn't the case. The two guys had never before even seen the man. It was determined that he was under the influence of something. He would be charged with multiple offenses, which put him in prison for two years. Stupid! So you just found a random car in the street and you thought that motherfucker was... 
Enough. That was you thought that motherfucker stole from something from your house. Really? This is so stupid, man. It's insane. Insane. The 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 amount of uh you know gap between one person to another the the independence level the the over obsession with freedom this is what happens fuck in august of 2018 justin bilton and his 70 year old father were camping at glacier national park in montana oh shit they had only been in the park for three hours the wildfires informed of an immediate evacuation of the area a forest fire ignited by lightning the previous night had gotten too far out of control However, oh God. by the time they got the evacuation notice, <clears throat> unknown to them, the only road out of the park had already been engulfed by the fire. Hmm. Damn. <clears throat> also, like recently, I heard of a news where, you know, some somewhere in, uh, um, you know, Maui or something, it, it, complete wildfires over there. Or, or it's almost looking like somebody did it on purpose. It's like, what the fuck? See, uh, this is what happens when people don't care about each other, you know? They, they burn up shit, like, f cause wildfires, steal somebody from somebody's house and shit, you know, all that shit. Or try to stop you in the middle of the road, swinging axe and everything. It's so fucking stupid, you know? <laughs> the obsession with freedom has gone so hard that the people are, you know, divided in, in the name of independence. Oh, my God. I don't know why this wildfire and who caused it. I guess it's because of um, uh, weather conditions and shit, but. <clears throat> I don't know how, how hot is that area because it, in India it's like 40 degrees, sometimes 45 degrees, and nothing gets lit on fire, but apparently in. in <laughs> I don't know. Is it similarly? Is it really that that how fucking hot over there that it caught wildfires like this? The forest? I don't know. Dude, you. Dad, the car is heating up. It's gonna explode. Holy shit! Dad, what if a tree falls on us? Please, God, help us. Please oh God. man. He's so worried, man. Holy shit. I'm getting out. You can't drive back. I can we get that out of the road. We get gloves. Oh my god. Stop. Stop. Oh fuck. Yeah, we gotta get out of here. A fallen tree is seen directly in the middle of the road, trapping oh, them inside man. the park. It's literally like a movie. <laughs> they had nowhere to go but back. So they ended up reversing through everything they had just went through. Oh god. When they reached their campsite, they abandoned their car and desperately started running towards a nearby lake. By huh. some miracle, there they would find two park employees in a boat on the shore of the lake. Justin and his father were rescued and taken to safety, leaving everything but this horrifying footage behind. Jeez. Oh, ho, ho, ho. they probably their car probably got burnt. <laughs> no, dang. The stash cam footage shows the armed robbery of a cab driver. Armed driver, robbery? Ralph Valletta had just started his shift. This was his first ride of the day. He was stopped at a light. And the rider can be seen in the back slouched down. Oh, but fuck. But abruptly, he sits up and demands Ralph give him everything he has. Oh, shit! This is so fucking horrible. Who does this to someone? Like, are you, like, completely, like, poor and has no money and have no clothes or some shit? Are you, like, a hobo, man? If you're a hobo and you're doing this, I understand your life is horrible and, and you're, you're, like, you're, you're crazy. But... Look at this guy. He got some really good looking gloves and he has a full raincoat and a face mask, everything. Like, what the fuck? He got a hoodie, everything, man. This dude is, he doesn't look that poor. I don't get it. Hey, give me all your money, man. Man, I don't have everything you got. Give me a, all right, now. All right, all right. I need it now. All right, I can, can make everything. this the easy way. Right, or we can, can make this the hard way, everything man. Everything I got, man. Keep your hand where I can see him. I just started. What, I what, just I, started. what else you got? I just Let me started. See your wallet. This is so horrible. Listen, we can do this the hard way or we can do this the easy way, man. Let me see your wallet and let me see your phone. He, he's he got balls trying to do this in the middle of a fucking... Like, in the middle of the traffic. Look at the cars behind him. 
There's a whole ass fucking big uh, truck or some shit too. What the fuck, man? Nobody does this, dude. Any nobody does this anywhere. Only in Western society, this kind of shit is just happens. It, this obsession with freedom has separated people, and now people can start fucking, you know, harming each other because they don't give a fuck about each other. You know? I need it all right <sighs> now. If you don't want to die, man. Okay. Okay. What the fuck? And apparently, like the black population uh, loves doing this. I don't know why. Like the 30, 13 percent of black population uh, is in Western society. I found out that, and apparently, like 90 <laughs> percent, fucking 50 percent or 90 percent. I don't remember the number. Like most of the crimes are committed by these black people. It's like what the? F they they are fucking insane. Something is fucked up about black people, bro. Yeah. Holy shit. And then they'll call you fucking racist if you say anything. It's just, it's just so stupid, you know. Unbeknownst to the writer, a police cruiser was stopped at the same light directly behind them. Hmm. That's point. a police car? What is he doing? What the fuck? The point during the robbery, the light to the lane they were in had turned green. And seeing that they weren't moving, the officer put on his lights and got out to investigate. Don't have anything in my I don't oh, I hope the driver stopped the car on purpose and didn't drive. That should fucking uh, wake up that police and start investigating. What the fuck? Oh my god. I need your wallet and your phone. I need your wallet. No, please don't give me a phone. I need that for my... There's a cop behind us. There's a cop behind us. Bro, look at the driver, man. He's so scared. He's like having panic attack. Look, in his age... This kind of shit should never happen. It can make his heart really, uh, like, he can have some serious problems. He looks old. Dude. Now fuck him. Fucking beat the shit out of him. Almost immediately. Oh, he was like crying. Oh my god. Oh my god. He was crying, bro. My god. Yeah, something is. Something is wrong with black people, man. I don't know what is going on. I don't know why they're like this. Or maybe is it because something is fucking rotting in the culture? Something is uh, causing problems and making them do this because it makes no sense. Yeah, yeah, man. The would realize that a robbery was taking place. So in response, he would order the rider out of the car where he would then be detained. The rider was arrested and later charged with multiple offenses. Man, multiple offenses, good job. Or maybe you shouldn't have... This is what happens when you have a multicultural society, bro. This is what happens. It can, can only get worse because... Oh, man, you should have never... You should have stayed what you were. You should have never, like, had some, you know, other race live, coexist together and shit like that. You shouldn't have done that, man. This is, this is exactly what the fuck's gonna happen. They're gonna turn on you. In April of 2021, a man named Mitch Kuhn was driving on the highway back from work when he saw this. What the fuck is that? That looks to be wearing a what? jacket, or that's possibly wrapped in a blanket, begins walking out in the middle of the highway. What is this? <laughs> that looked like a statue. What is that? That that looked like a statue moving. Hey. What the fuck? Just barely missing Mitch's truck. What the fuck? Mitch was towing a trailer and felt that if he abruptly stopped, it would cause an accident. So instead, he opted to call the police, reporting an unattended child walking on the highway. Police assured Mitch that they'd send out patrol units immediately. Oh. An hour later, Mitch called again for a follow-up, as well as to offer the footage he had caught on his dash cam. But he was told that it wouldn't be necessary, as the child had been collected safely and was on its way home. However, strangely, police would later state that no child was found despite officers searching the area until 3.45 a.m. What? Additionally, they would claim that at no You're telling me that's a ghost? ...point did they what tell the Mitch that they had found the child. The next morning, multiple volunteers commenced the search of the area, but no child was ever found, and therefore the search eventually ended. At the time the footage was captured, there were no reports of a missing child in the area. It remains unknown who exactly was captured in this video. What is that thing? 
it it doesn't even look like it's moving its legs to walk fr- in the front no it it it's literally like this and it's move what the fuck is going on what is that <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me that's a ghost, man. What? This dash cam that's... footage was captured in the streets of Taiwan. Right away, it's clear the video oh, takes man. place in the midst of a storm. A storm where the winds are strong enough to throw around debris. Oh, At shit! No point, debris is even seen this is a hurricane! Shield. But little did the drivers know that an actual tornado was forming right behind them and quickly heading in their direction. Oh, no! Oh, God! What the f- <laughs> the dash Whoa! cam footage captures the exact moment the tornado went directly through them. It was even strong enough to lift vehicles off the ground, which can actually be seen. Oh with the my fin god! The road. Oh, look at that Once car! The vehicle leave the ground. It, that, cl- that car was about to fly off, man. Oh my and god! To be full on dragged by the tornado, seemingly disappearing. But once the tornado passes, it can be seen much further down the road, wedged in between two trees. Oh More shit! Concerning, however, is the that thing is so big over there? Person that gets thrown by the tornado on the right side of the road. Oh god! Unfortunately, this woman would suffer major injuries and would really? to the hospital. Holy the shit! To produce further damage. In yeah, the- random shit gets fucking like you got you get beat by random shit that's flying around. And you might even broke, break some bones, you know? Form of 50 inches of rain that would cause multiple deadly landslides. Fuck! This video was taken in Russia. It shows the dash cam footage of a man driving down a desolate and long stretch of dirt road. Then, up ahead is a car parked in Whoa! such a way so as to block traffic. What the fuck? Two men with baseball bats begin walking up to the driver. <laughs> that's when it becomes clear that no! this is a robbery, and the parked car was an intentional makeshift roadblock. The driver- He looks like a fucking kid. Tries to escape. Look at this guy. He looks like a fucking high school kid, man. I would get down, I would open my door and start beating the shit out of these little bitches. No, this is stupid. What is this? But the two what? men get in the way and do their best to prevent it. I would keep like a fucking knuckle duster, man. I would fucking beat the fuck out of them. Not not like this. What is this? You pussy bitch. Move. Run him over. Fuck him. the driver had a window of opportunity and Good. didn't manage. He slammed on the gas and was able to get away unscathed. He Good. He around the roadblock and was free. It's and unknown. also, like, the road looks like it's muddy and, and all murky and shit. He might even, you know, get, like, drop his wheel in some mud and never get out of it and shit, you know? It can happen. Only if the two men with baseball bats were ever caught. Fuck. You cannot trust anybody. What the fuck? What kind of society is this? <laughs> this is insane. In late November of 2015, a large catastrophic bushfire broke out in South Australia. Hmm. This dash cam footage was captured by one of the fire trucks responding to the incident. Right from the start of the video, enormous smoke clouds are shown, depicting oh, just how shit. large the fire had gotten. Fuck, that looks As apocalyptic. Forward, that looks like a fucking, I don't know, some kind of disaster movie, you know, like, uh, you know, some kind of tornado type movie. It looks like uh, some, some crazy shit. It looks apocalyptic to me. Visibility gradually worsens. It gets so bad to where the fire trucks are forced to stop. Huh. Then, in the distance, the fire itself can be seen, spreading towards them unnervingly fast. Oh! What the fuck? Bro! Holy shit! Oh god, that's a fire! That's fire, bro! Whoa! Run! Run, 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 run! Go back! Oh, fuck! Oh! A miscommunication between the two trucks resulted in a collision. Oh my god! The truck in the front was attempting to back up out of the fire. Dude! The truck with the dash cam was entering what's known as a burnover. A I never, is a- I never seen fire like fucking going fast. It's almost chasing people out. Fire truck protection Dude. protocol where the truck stays in place. And making, make, making people run. I never seen fire 
go go in the front like attacking someone holy shit velcro blankets to protect themselves from the heat water Ooh. is sprayed outside of the vehicle to keep it from catching on fire and in the inside breathing masks are used by the crew oh During my this protocol, god however the crew from the truck in the front can be heard desperately explaining how they didn't have water for a burnover or rather their truck sprinkler system wasn't working properly oh god god Oh my god! They couldn't stay in place and were forced to drive forward in the hopes of escaping the fire. This which is you can insane. actually see in the video as the truck fades into the distance. Fortunately, this move would end up saving their lives. They would make it to the other side of the fire, and everyone inside the truck as well as the one with the dash cam would make it out with minimal injuries. Oh man! <laughs> Holy shit! What? This footage was captured way back in. That is fucking creepy. What the? F that is so devastating. 2012. It takes place near an airport in Moscow, Russia. Hmm. The airport is right next to a highway, and on December 29th, this dash cam footage would capture the disturbing moments a plane missed the runway and crash landed just on the right side of the highway. Oh shit! Oh my god! Ah! Oh god! Whoa! That dude just... Oh my god! <laughs> dude! It turns out the plane had mistakenly overshot the runway because of bad weather conditions. So when it landed, it didn't have enough room to break. No oh, man! Left no choice but to go directly into the highway, causing plane seats and other debris to shoot towards passing vehicles. Oh, look at All that car! Clearly seen in the footage. <laughs> Oh, the time shit. Of the crash, the plane was only carrying crew members. No passengers were on board. But unfortunately, five of the eight total crew members would lose their lives. The driver of the vehicle with the dash cam would make it out unharmed. Oh, man. What the f <laughs> What am I watching? Oh, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Holy shit. What a crazy ass. A bunch of crazy shit. <laughs> All right, that is insane. What the fuck? Uh, I hope you like that. <laughs> I hope you liked it. You know, I, uh, uh, shall we watch something else? Uh, we're gonna watch that later. We, shall we watch another dash cam shit? <laughs> because you know, you people seem to like it. You know, and some new viewers are up here that are watching this. Thank you for watching. If you like it, please follow me on Twitch. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's watch something else. Another crazy uh, dash cam footage shit. Uh, let, let's watch this. Look at this shit. It's in the dark. <laughs> or, or not da dash cam. Dash cam. We're, we're seeing too much dash cam. Let's watch some doorbell camera footage. Okay. Let's watch some of that. That would be fucking insane. Because we've been seeing dash cam footage. Like I've seen two videos at this point. Let's just. What is this? <laughs> Look at this! What? Who is this guy, man? Oh god, look at this shit. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> what? A clown? Who the fuck is this? I would just grab a baseball bat. Not a baseball bat. I would grab a, a baseball bat with nails. Like that zombie video games. I would grab that and fucking beat the shit out. I beat his ass with it. <laughs> you know? Holy shit. What is that? Who is that guy? In this first video, this house's ring doorbell captured a man walk up to the front door in the middle of the night. Hmm. But rather than actually knocking on the door or ringing the doorbell, the man pretends to do so. At first it seems odd, until you realize what's actually going on. Huh. Near the left side of the screen, a car's headlights can be seen. Some dude that is half naked is wa wandering around in the middle of the fucking dark empty areas next to a jungle and he's just knocking on a door what the fuck who does that it's clear whoever is dropped first why are you walking around outside of your house half naked why why are you doing that are you like i don't know are you like going to like maybe like a baptism or some shit that makes sense it makes no sense why you're walking half naked it's not like you got six pack and fucking muscular body that you can walk around without 
a shirt or something even that would be like dude what is this like porno are you filming a porno what's going on dude driving the vehicle is making this guy walk up and talk to the house owner for a seemingly sinister purpose he, he looks like a gr fucking middle-aged guy with tattoos on him only only bitches deserve tattoos not dudes dudes look ugly in tattoos some hot chicks with tattoos look really hot okay so please stop as the guy obviously doesn't want to do it I mean, so much so that he fakes knocking on the door and even fakes a conversation with the house owner. What? While making sure the driver can see him doing so. Oh shit! There, there's some other guy in the car to the to the left. What the fuck? Okay, so this guy is like pretending. I guess they were like sending him to in order to have a conversation with the owner and then they were gonna uh, you know break in and start stealing I don't know god forbid whatever they were gonna do man they might even like rape and shit and murder oh my god so this guy is actually a good guy what the fuck bro I would say leave don't let them come here sorry about that sorry sorry uh, okay Dude do not leave your if you have like a mom if you have like a sister if you have like a Girlfriend or something don't leave leave them alone in your house. You know you are the fucking Head of the family you take care Don't leave them like that because this kind of shit can happen This doesn't happen anywhere else only in Western society this kind of weird shit happens man I just don't understand why you know, I, I think it's because of all this obsession with freedom that divided people uh, and, and in the name of independence and nobody gives a fuck about anybody anymore. And this kind of shit will definitely happen in a society like that. Like, holy shit. Oh, so, wait, he was looking for some dude called Matt? From the fake conversation, it's clear the driver wants the man to look for someone named Matt. Huh. One comment guessed the man could have been being forced to rob the place, but didn't want to do it, making him fake the whole situation and claim no Matt lived there. Oh, but fuck. to this day, the real motives of the driver are still unclear. Jesus. <laughs> this footage features a random woman walking up to someone's front door. The woman clearly isn't acting normal, or at least until a car passes where she breaks character so as not to draw attention to herself. After the car is gone, the woman can be seen putting her face right up to the camera. Whoa! Whoa! She, she looks like some kind of teenager, some dumbass teenager trying to pull a prank on some, uh, some, some dude's house. This is stupid. Some of these teenagers go insane, bro. After watching the disturbing footage... The Do you even understand how stupid you are, bitch? I would fucking... I would wear some kind of like a bullshit on my knuckles and I would fucking beat beat you beat the shit out of you and break your teeth like, the house holy would shit. claim he had no idea who the woman was some dumb bitch that's that's it <laughs> stupid all right holy the shit bell camera video shows the horrifying early stages of a fire in a neighbor's property as oh. the video goes on you can see as the fire gradually continues to grow so much so that it eventually reaches the house with the doorbell camera. At the oh time of the shit! Fire, the house owner himself was asleep. Oh my god! He would be woken up by multiple oh. notifications on his phone. It's inside the house. Detected by his doorbell camera. That shit is inside the house, bro. After reviewing the footage, the house owner would frantically run to get a fire extinguisher and desperately attempt to put the fire out. <laughs> a fire extinguisher is not gonna. It's gonna be like pissing in the fucking. No, it's not. It's like it's like gonna be like pissing in the ocean. No, it's not gonna do anything. Look at this shit. <laughs> now he's gonna come out half naked in his own oh. <laughs> oh god. I, I feel bad for him man. He it's probably was sleeping. He didn't even he didn't even have a fucking pants on. Oh god. <laughs> Dude. What are you doing? Get the fuck out, man! Jump off the window! <laughs> Dude! Hey! Hey! 
You stupid bitch, what are you but doing? After realizing it was too late, the house owner would escape through the house's back door. <laughs> it's Good. pretty safe to say that the motion detected notifications that woke up the house owner saved oh. his life that night. Otherwise, he would have never known. Probably got trapped in there and, you know, it could have been ten times worse. This video captured a woman frantically knocking on this house's front door. As she continues to do so, she can be seen constantly looking behind her. And that's when you realize why. A man walks up to the woman and proceeds to grab her firmly, telling her to get into the car. What the, the while, fuck? The woman can be heard pleading for him to stop. Holy shit! Bro! Why is it so blurry? What the fuck? So ring doorbell cameras can get blurry? Stop, please, no. No, 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 The man in the video was later identified to be 20-year-old Victor Kucic, and he would ultimately be charged with third-degree felony kidnapping. Alien where probably plays video games and in his mom's basement. Look at this bitch. He looks like <laughs> he looks like a little bitch. You know what is this? What is wrong with these people, man? He could have been a kidnapping case or a murder case or a disappearance. Any one of those three, if they didn't find that motherfucker. Holy shit. This ring doorbell starts off showing the house owner. What is wrong with some people, man? Why would they? What? They're simply doing her laundry. Though, before she can even enter the laundry room, she can be seen pausing. And the audio from the clip makes it clear as to why. A voice can be heard desperately pleading for help, though it's unclear as to where- It's almost like he- that voice was singing, what is that? The voice is coming from, clearly disturbed, and worried it could have been someone hiding around her property, the woman would end up calling the police. I looked around, I didn't see anybody out on the road or any cars or anything, so I went back to my ring video to make sure it wasn't just- How do you get to go out on the bus? Oh man. <clears throat> I'm telling you, we need like a gadget that can track people and, and where they're going and who's doing what, everything. That can only solve, only a gadget like, like that can solve disappearances, murders, and you know, fucking, you know, killings and whatnot, you know? That's, we need a gadget, bro. We need a gadget that can solve these, these mysterious things, okay? It, it should only be available for the police and the people that are uh, the families of the victims and shit, you know? We need a gadget. Somebody needs to make a gadget and save this world because so many people get disappeared every day, you know? Like there's like massive sex trafficking where women get disappeared, babies get disappeared, you know? Kids get disappeared. We need a gadget that can track everybody, can track everybody and, and show us who's killing who. Who's, uh, where did they stop and why did they disappear and where is their body even if they're dead we need to fucking have a gadget like that somebody please make one Th this is un unbelievable it, somebody was singing like help please somebody or some shit and we don't know who it is you know it could be a neighborhood's house and somebody was probably saying that in the basement because the neighbor fucking trap them in the basement or some shit it's, things like that can happen we need a gadget Somebody saying something, but I can't. Well, I posted it on there. The police would search the whole property, but find absolutely nothing. And to this day, it's still unclear whose voice was talking, or even where it was coming from. Maybe it was somebody on a mic somewhere outside, but it was the voice was so like like sounding like a hum that it felt like it was coming from her house or some shit. I don't know. This doorbell camera footage seems to have captured an almost transparent looking figure walking across the house owner's property in the middle of the night. The figure looks to have no face and seems to slowly become less visible as it continues to move. What? The audio from the video reveals the noise of very faint footsteps. 
What is this? What? What the fuck is that? That After shit makes no sense. And examining it looks like he's wearing some like a black hoodie or some shit. Around the property, the house owner found nothing out of the ordinary. And it's still unclear. I think he's wearing a black hoodie and he went around the tree. If this is a tree, he weren't, went around it and then he showed up himself, showed his whole body here. I think he's wearing a black hoodie. I could be wrong. What exactly was caught on video that night? It's not a ghost. I mean, I, I'm not saying ghosts don't exist or anything. We don't know if they exist or not, but it, it, it looks like a dude that's wearing black hoodie. That's the, the owner of this house would wake up to a notification on his phone telling oh, him shit! motion was detected at his front door. And after reviewing the footage, this is what he found. What? There was an old woman with a knife just standing at his front door, constantly shifting her body weight from side to side. <laughs> the woman can be seen awkwardly holding and looking at the knife. What the well fuck? Constantly glancing all around her. What is this? It's like, should I, should I kill her? Should I kill the people inside? Should I? It's like a crazy bitch from from a mental asylum. <laughs> Dude. This is insane. You know, I would be like, if if someone like that came up to my house, I would be like ready with the guns, everything. But I would just open the door just to see what she would do. Like I would play around. You know, you want to kill me, lady? <laughs> what are you doing with that knife? You wanna you wanna charge me? Charge at me? You know? But I would have my buddies in the back ready with a shotgun. You know? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I would love to play with this bitch. This is stupid. <laughs> what is this? A knife? She looks creepy too. What After the fuck? A few more seconds. Does she have like bipolar or something? Maybe it's because of because she's old and she maybe has a dementia and going crazy. The woman finally attempts to ring the doorbell, but seemingly can't bring herself to do it for whatever reason. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, uh, should I kill? Should I kill or not? L let me press the bu button. No. Uh, what is this? <laughs> Stupid bitch. I would jump scare her. I would open the door and say, "Yeah," you know, just to just to fucking freak her out. And after two minutes of footage, it cuts off. It's still unclear who this woman was. What or the what fuck? Her to walk up to a stranger's front door. Even old people have no common sense. What is this? Wielding a knife. What the fuck? After hearing his doorbell go off, this <laughs> San Diego house owner would look at his doorbell camera through his phone, and the camera revealed a supposed door-to-door -door salesman waiting outside. The house owner decided to confront the man with the doorbell speaker. And that's when the salesman claimed he was looking for the Robinsons residence at 712, which was not the house he was at. After being informed of this, the salesman would politely apologize for the mix-up. This is the Robinsons residence at 712? What the fuck? Some dude is pretending to be a salesman? Dude, some of these strangers that come to your house, you better fucking be careful, man. Holy shit, you cannot have anybody come into your house like this, especially if you if you have like a independent house, uh, not in, not like a room in an apartment. If they show up like this, this is a fucking war. You cannot allow them like this. You should you should fucking have a gate outside and you close that fucking gate and make people stand there. Don't let them come into your doorstep. That is fucking dangerous. Oh, I apologize for that. Suspicious of the encounter, the house owner would send the footage to the local police department, who huh. disturbingly confirmed that this exact man was suspected of breaking into at least 19 homes and impersonating Whoa. a salesman to do so. The man has yet to be caught by police. Dude. I'm telling you, some of the teenagers, some weird motherfuckers, some uh, naive idiots have a kink. Have a kink or some kind of a fucking um, fantasy of doing weird shit. L hey, let's go steal something from that house. Let's fucking break into it. Isn't that cool? There's so many idiots out there, man. 
You better be ready. Holy shit. Likely taking place during the whole killer clown craze of 2016, this <laughs> ring doorbell caught the exact moment someone oh. dressed in a clown costume walked up to its front door. <laughs> the person can be seen tilting their head and slowly walking up to the door, almost the whole time staring directly into the camera. While it's most likely just someone trying to scare people, <laughs> there's a small oh. chance something a lot more sinister is going on here. Dude. Dude. I would wear a clown mask and I would open the door right next to him and they would be like doing this too. Let, <laughs> it would be so hilarious. But then we cannot trust that guy because he could be a fucking criminal. Who knows? You know? You can play fun with all the criminals you want. But they're gonna grab a knife. Like suddenly. And then start fucking stabbing you. Shit can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. To this day, it's still unclear whether the house owner experienced Somebody it. was talking in, in the right side and he decided to go there. What is he doing there? What the fuck? Anything for He'd rather be here. Nobody's here. They're regarding the situation. <laughs> this is hilarious. Some of them are super hilarious, but at the same time, like, weird. It, it's fucking weird, man. <laughs> There's many videos like this, like ring bell door cameras and shit. This is the most popular shit there. I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. We're going to watch all of them someday, but let's watch something else. Let's watch uh, this thing. I wanted to know what the fuck happened, you know? Uh, there's this lady that comes out of a hotel or some shit and starts talking about yelling yelling about uh, You know, oh my god uh, They're eating children. They're eating human bodies or something like that She was yelling and it was so scary and then the police come in and then they take Just just take her away from that place and we don't know who the fuck that woman is You know, so this guy says he debunked that so let's watch. Three, two, one. Let's go. Let's see what's the what's what's actually the fucking you know the reason why she yells and who is she? Apparently she's like a a model, a model or something. But she I don't know what happened to her. Oh God. She's biting! In 2009, this young woman named Gabriela Rico Jimenez appeared on the Mexican news making a frantic conspiracy theory style rant in which she dropped the names of several powerful Mexican politicians and the awful things she witnessed them doing, including eating human flesh. In the middle of her outburst, she was taken away by police officers. Although this appeared to be some random schizo, word quickly spread that this was actually a famous Mexican model. After this event, she was never seen again, and every trace of her has been removed from the internet, leading people to think there may actually be a sinister truth behind what she was saying. This Whoa. rabbit hole goes deep, with people trying to find out what happened to her and what is being hidden from us. I've done a little bit of digging, and I found some fairly conclusive evidence to debunk these conspiracy claims, and I even think I found Gabriella herself. Hmm. But before I reveal what I found, <clears throat> let's start from the beginning. Really? On August 4th, 2009, this clip was shown on a Mexican news station showing Gabriela Rico Jimenez in front of the Fiesta Inn in Monterrey. She was wearing a ripped shirt that said yum yum, spouting oh. a nonsensical rant. And she looks so thin, she looks anorexic. She looks way too thin. She might even die if you leave her for like four days, you know, without food. I think she might die, you know. What the fuck? She speaks about being imprisoned by young and powerful people and some sort of conspiracy that began in the middle of 2001. She talks about how people were killed, including someone named Mourinho. How do you know that this is a conspiracy? Huh? 
she might be telling the truth there are some weird people out there bro they will do some weird shit just because they're rich and they want to experience or some shit and then they will do some really bad stuff you cannot just call it conspiracy unless you know if 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 it, if she's stupid or not you know she goes on to say that a man named carlos slim was responsible for this She continues to shout at the hotel staff, saying they know what she is talking about, and that she wants them to be given the maximum prison sentence. Oh God! She goes on about being taken to a police station and mocked for what she was telling them. Okay. At the end of her rant, these claims get even crazier, saying these people would eat human flesh. At this point, the police wow. arrived and they took her away. She's probably having an episode uh, caused by some, uh, you know, maybe some traumatic events she went through. Maybe she saw some people eat human beings or some shit. And but then she uh, exaggerates that because she's having an episode, you know, so I don't know, man. It could be anything, it, she, you know, to be in order to prove something, you need evidence. Does she have any proof? I don't know. Where is she now? Oh, she's biting. What the fuck? Bitch, you're thin as fuck, man. I would not fight if I was that thin. You're so thin. I think I can break you if I grab your hand and do this. I can break you. You know? She was what? never seen again. Shortly after all this occurred, several bloggers decided to take a deeper look into this to figure out what exactly she was talking about. A few early bloggers pointed out that Gabriela was actually a well-known supermodel, mm. making runaway appearances in Mexico City, Paris, and New York. Apparently, she even made an appearance on the Mexican version of Cosmopolitan magazine. Her uh, high profile status would make this rant and subsequent disappearance all the more eerie. Oddly enough, if you look up Gabriela Rico Jimenez, hmm. you will find no evidence of her ever being a model. It's as if, aside from this news appearance, she was a ghost. Because of people's insistence that she was indeed a famous model, hmm. it has been speculated that people behind this conspiracy wiped every trace of her from the internet in an attempt to silence her and reduce her credibility. Huh. In Gabriela's tirade, she mentions that Carlos Swim was behind all this. Carlos Slim huh. is a Mexican businessman, and at the time of this event, he was the richest man in the world. So, oh. as far as some Illuminati-level conspiracy goes, people felt he was financially capable. It didn't help that there were further rumors about Gabriela being close to one of Carlos Slim's sons, hmm. which may have given her the opportunity to witness some shady business he was involved in. But Whoa. this is all just unconfirmed hearsay at this point. Gabriela also speaks of a man named Mourinho being killed. For more context behind this, Gabriela is talking about a Mexican politician named Juan Camilo Mourinho Terrazo. Huh. He was affiliated with the National Action Party and was a secretary to President Felipe Calderon. One of Mourinho's huh. responsibility was leading a government campaign against Mexican drug cartels. Huh. Just one year prior to this news broadcast, he died when a private jet he was flying in crashed into traffic in Mexico City. The crash killed everyone on board the plane along with seven people on the ground. At the time, Whoa. the public was skeptical about the cause of the crash. Two black boxes police Whoa. found in the crash were sent to the United States to determine the cause, which was found to be a result from turbulence because of the pilot's failure to slow down in time. If we want to take Gabriela's rant seriously, then maybe this crash was not an accident at all. As internet investigators oh, continue to dig into this, looking for answers about what happened here and where Gabriela was, another interesting development was made. In 2015, a Spanish blog called The Black Manic posted an article giving oh, the testimony man. of a law student who claimed to have spoken to Gabriela after she was taken away by the police in 2009. Huh. He said he was at the same police station she was taken to, and when he saw her, he approached and asked her some questions. 
Huh. He says that she told him a bunch of unnerving things, including speaking about an underground base in Monterey where they Whoa. live and regularly steal children to eat. Whoa. After 20 minutes of talking to her, some well-dressed people arrived and ordered him out of the room and then asked him what Gabriella said. He just said that she spoke of crazy things and then left. The next day, he went to the high officials of the ministry and asked Dang. for more information about Gabriella. They laughed at him and said, Really? She doesn't exist. She never existed, and you don't work here. Whoa. I'm very skeptical of this testimony, not only because the surface six years after Gabriella's disappearance, but Whoa. the entire thing reads like some corny movie script <laughs> and doesn't make a whole lot of sense. At the end of the day... Yeah, the, especially that comment, really, if she doesn't exist, she never existed, and you don't work here. Understand? Private, private corporal, right? understand? <laughs> it's like that, what the... There's just something a stranger on the internet said with no evidence, and I don't see any good reason to take this seriously. <laughs> Dang. Okay, let's debunk this. Let's see this guy debunk it. If it's even like maybe he's just gonna say some shit. And yes, I debunked it. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just see. Before I give you the smoking gun on all of this, hmm. I want to establish a few things. The only thing that makes this case as eerie as it is, is mm. the fact that Gabriella was allegedly a famous model before this happened. A random no- She looks so thin, bro. She's so thin. Look at her arms. Man, I think children are much more, you know, <laughs> jacked up than her. She's so thin, she make, she make look like teenagers look good. I mean, what- Nobody <laughs> going on a rant and then fading into obscurity isn't all that weird. But a public figure doing this and then being completely wiped from existence is just unsettling. The fact yeah. that no evidence can be found anywhere this woman being a model makes me think that she never actually was one. Sure, I guess it's possible that some powerful entity erased every trace of her from the internet, huh. <laughs> but that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It would be near impossible to get rid of literally everything on this. At least one person out there should have an article or a picture or something that can back this up, but that just doesn't <laughs> exist. And even if an evil organization could pull off such an impossible feat, I don't see why they would. Huh. Wouldn't it make more sense to just leave the whole thing alone and let everyone think that she's crazy? Maybe fabricate some medical documents showing her having psychosis or something? Scrubbing all the details of a high-profile figure immediately after this happened? I think it's she's, she's like some some lady, some, some woman. Um, one of them teenage people that are like uh, having boyfriend and they go somewhere else with their boyfriend or uh, you know or, or go alone to live in a city or something and then she comes out has has an episode on screen and you know the Mexican channel reports on it and then the police take her away end of story we don't know anything about her we don't know anything we don't know who she is it's all up to the police that took her and we don't know what the police did with her so it, that that's where all of that ends and we got this recording of her on the TV channel because they had to record it because she was yelling so loud and that was part of a news of that day and and it was forgotten quickly the next day end of story we don't know what she is and who she is there's nothing she's not a super when you when you look like like that thin she's so anorexic she's no she's in no way a supermodel okay but she kind of looked good her face looks good looks cute i love her <laughs> all right let's go this just makes everything way more suspicious than it would have been if they just left it alone can we go on a date you look good bitch <laughs> and every person online saying she was a model I, I, i'm gonna give you double cheeseburgers and you will not be thin anymore okay model is only saying that because that's what everyone else is saying they don't have any evidence or memory of her modeling they just repeat this claim because oh well all these strangers on the internet are saying it so it must be true mm -hmm. I, I kind of feel bad for her, you know? She, I don't know what she's going through, man. She's, she's probably, I don't know, maybe she, she received some bad news in the phone and then started going crazy. I don't know. Some people go crazy, you know? Some people watch some of their loved ones die and then they go literally insane. They li their mind just breaks and then they go insane and they never get back to being good, you know? Shit like that can happen. And I feel bad for her. If I if I saw her somewhere, if I was if I was there when she was yelling, I would be like, calm down, calm down. I will I would be next to her. I would fucking climb the. I would go into like with the police that comes over there and takes her. I would go with her 
and I would fucking uh, see where she's going, what she's doing. I would take her back to her home or some shit, you know? The biggest reason to doubt her ever being a model is that not even the original news broadcast mentions this. They just mm-hmm. refer to her as some random young woman. Yeah. And think about it. It's just the news of the day, and that's it. News channels love to embellish stories, so if she was some famous Mexican model, they definitely yeah. would have mentioned that she, she would actually follow. I think if she was a major model, I think these uh, reporters would act, would actually follow the police van and and question her after all that shit. At the end of the day, like seriously, she they would follow her wherever she goes, but they didn't because she's not a supermodel. Okay, she's not, and she's not really well known. Even if she was, she wouldn't be. You know, because nobody cares, really. Detail on the news. The only reason they even know her name is because at the beginning of the broadcast, they mentioned that she was arrested for causing a similar scene prior to this event. Para todos nuestros auditores, efectivamente, a pocas horas de haber sido detenida esta mujer, Gabriela Rico Jiménez, el de 21 años de edad, fue puesta en libertad de manera inexplicable y sin embargo, las primeras horas de este lunes volvió a protagonizar un escándalo en plena vía pública, Luis, y es que... This whole rant happened after Sue's released that first time. At the end of the Whoa. broadcast, they talk about how they hope the family of this woman can be located to help her. The relatives of this young woman can be located so that they can provide her. Mm-hmm. This doesn't at all sound like they're talking about a famous person. I think one of these random blogs talking about this broadcast either made a mistake or blatantly lied about her being a model just to sensationalize things. And <laughs> people just latched onto that rumor and didn't bother to fact check it. The other big mm. detail that makes this case so mysterious is that Gabriella was never seen again after this. Except mm. this isn't true either. She never huh. made any big appearances after this, but huh. the rumors that she was killed or locked in an evil lair are completely false. <laughs> There's a Mexican news article from 2017, eight years after this all went down, that reported a 29-year-old woman named Gabriela Rico Jimenez was found wandering the streets at dawn, claiming she did oh. not remember where her house was. What the they fuck? They tried to locate her relatives, but she was eventually sent to the Department of Social Work. The name oh. matches, and the age seems to match as well, since oh. this would mean that she was 21 years old at the time of the news broadcast. And the lost oh, mental state also matches. The only thing that is really up for question is the picture <laughs> of her. Oh man! Yes, she doesn't immediately look the same as she did in the news broadcast, but huh. this was nearly a decade after the fact, so it's not- I mean, she's a Mexican, I guess, and yeah. She she kind of looks like her, but but she looks like a European girl here. She looks like a Caucasian over here. She doesn't look like a Mexican, and this is the woman that they caught. Can you see like her eyebrows and her eyes or some shit? Maybe like this woman's eyes are a little bit bigger than her. Maybe I don't know. Oh, and she doesn't have any. Look, the uh, the forehead, the hairline, kind of matches. You know. The hairline matches a little bit. She got the pointy hairline in the front like this. You know? The hairline matches. And she doesn't have that much of a forehead. She doesn't have that much of a forehead here either. I guess she ate a lot and became too many cheeseburgers. (laughs) I don't know. Not out of the question that she just let herself go a bit. Especially if she's mentally ill. A lot of the features still seem like a reasonable match to me particularly the eyes and nose. But I thought, maybe I'm just being biased. So wait, wait, really l- Let me eye- see the nose. The nose, huh? Look, the nose only appears halfway through the, uh, the, the nose bridge, okay? And you can see the same thing here. The nose uh, actually protrudes halfway through the bridge. Yeah, it has to be her. It has to be her. Man, I didn't, she looked like a, I guess she is Mexican, but I, here she looks like a Caucasian girl. So I Eyes and nose. But I thought, maybe I'm just being biased. So to be as objective as possible, I got a second opinion. Hmm. I used a facial comparison software. Oh, this is the face? Look at this. That's the face. It looks like the same face. Look at her eyes. They're uh, bulgy eyes like that. She got... Uh, look at this eyebrow and look at this. It's similar eyebrow. Similar eyebrow. Yeah, it's, it, it is her, but she's fat now. 
<laughs> but to compare At 29 th years old, the two faces to see if they were the same person. This software tells a 98.8% .8 accuracy. Oh. And when I compared the faces, it said the probability of them being the same person was very high. So oh. I think it's safe to say this is Gabriella. This is cool. And at least as of 2017, she is still alive. But you know the sad part about all of this? This probably still isn't good enough for some people. It's really <laughs> hard to reason with conspiracy theorists. I'm sure come they'll on. look at- Hey, come on, man. Why are you insulting conspiracy theorists? These conspiracy theorists can actually question things. Whereas you, it's nothing. It's nothing. Really, bitch, really. There's something to something always, okay? You might be wrong too. Let's be honest, okay? So stop insulting the- Conspiracy theory. What is a conspiracy? What is that name? It makes no sense. You question and you find the answers, okay? There's no definitive answer to everything either. So please shut up, okay? Look at this and what say, oh, well, you see, that article was actually faked by the government and they just used an AI image of her to throw us. I guess this bitch is a liberal. I guess he's a liberal. It, what is it with you? You got some problems with the people that hate government? What is wrong with this guy? It's off. Huh? And you know what? <laughs> Fine. I think Gabriella was never a model, just some random mentally unwell woman having an episode. Hmm. But if you want to believe that the government took a high profile model, erased every trace of her from the internet, except for this news broadcast for some reason, and then made sure that none of her relatives, associates, or friends ever spoke a single word of it, and that genuinely seems like the most reasonable explanation to you, then more power to you. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the flip side. This bitch is annoying. I hate these people, dude, that are like, hey, I know better than you. Uh, you suck or you, you're, you're stupid because you're conspiracy or just so stupid. These people are like, can you be normal for once, bro? Can you be normal for fuck's sake? Like, what are you doing? What, why are you so like bothered by what I think? I think she might not be real. You know, I, I think maybe there's some, maybe she is actually killed. Who knows? You know, I, I'm allowed to think that. Why are you hating on me? You know, the, the, some of these people are fucking crazy, man. Crazy people, okay? Crazy. <laughs> but, um, you know, let's just, let's just end this stream right here. And I've been watching for what? Like two hours at this point? Bitch, bitch, calm down. Okay, two hours. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of fucking uh, watching videos. And I'm sorry if you're late to the stream. But don't worry, I'm going to save the stream so that you guys can, uh, you know, watch it on your own and shit. But, um, you know, if, if you like it, you can watch it on your own. Okay, so no, no worries. But, uh, yeah, that's it for this uh, stream. And if you like it, please, I'll save this video. Don't worry. So that you can watch it again. And also, like, go check out my YouTube channels, okay? I do reaction videos. Um, my, my main channel is Unlimited Health. That's my main channel. Same name, okay? And my backup channel is Unlimited Health, The Backup. Go check it out. It's there. You, you'll find a lot of reaction videos. And if you want me to react to something, please type down over there in the comment sections. I'll note it down and react to them. Okay? And you will say I will even say your name. Okay? So yeah, let's just uh, you know let, you know if you like if, if you're watching the stream, please follow me on Twitch. Definitely follow me on Twitch. Okay? And I'm gonna do a lot of these streams. And you know I might not show up sometimes like two days gap. You know, but I'm I'm trying my best to get back fast and quick okay at least two times a week I'm, i want to get back and do it okay so please make sure to fo follow me on twitch and uh, please suggest me videos if you want me to react to something on my youtube channels uh so watch some of my reactions if you like them subscribe to them show me uh support and follow me on twitch and i will see you guys later and also like go check out other streams that i actually saved the previous streams, creepy shit, all of that shit. Go check it out. It's on my Twitch channel as highlights. Go check them out. You will find them uh, interesting. If you, if you get bored, uh, watch another one, okay? <laughs> There's so many videos there, and you'll find them all, okay? So, yeah, that's it for this reaction. Please make sure to follow me on Twitch and subscribe to my YouTube channels, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. <laughs>